Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be installing the Fleece Performance Engineering's Power Flow Lift Pump for your VP44 equipped Dodge pickup truck. This is a full fuel sending unit that you drop in your tank for your 98 and a half to 02 trucks. Uh, machine top again. This pump design in here, this is a dual gear rotor pump, so you're gonna flow plenty enough fuel with this design to support up to 800 horsepower. All right, this is gonna come with a new fuel level sensor to put in your truck. So for you guys that have got your fuel gauge doesn't work in your truck, this is gonna correct that problem, which is a really big advantage to this to me. Uh, active fill technology on the bucket, so you're not gonna have any more quarter tank uh, issues with this. Really, really well made, really, really well designed. When Fleece first came out with a power flow lift pump, you know it came out for the common rail trucks, for the six, seven trucks. Uh, and other platforms and the first question that we had because you know vp44 trucks that's our niche uh first question we had when are you going to do this for vp44 trucks so really really thankful for the guys at fleece coming out with this kit let's talk a little bit more about what you get with this um they're going to be replacing uh with this setup you're going to be replacing your stock fuel bowl uh, so we're going to be replacing it with this fleece machine block uh, the fleece machine block has got dual outlet ports got dual sensor ports in here if you want to put a pre and post uh, fuel filter sensor on the, on here uh, you've got your fuel inlet as well really really nice piece again this is machined in-house by fleece they're sending a Donaldson P F or P553207 filter. This is a filter and water separator combo. This is actually three micron filtration. Did a little research on this. Fleece took this to three micron filtration, so going to get a little bit better filtration with that uh, with that filter itself. All A and N fitting, push to lock stuff uh, to fit onto the not only the pump but as the f the fuel filter housing as well. They sent a new O-ring seal, new seal for your tank, uh, for your pump to go in the tank, which was a nice, a nice touch as well. Uh, all half inch fuel hose to take it from the fuel tank all the way to your VP44 pump. You, you'll actually be uh, creating, creating your own big line kit with this. And then our wiring harness. The wiring harness from Fleece is like um, a lot like the original wiring harness if you have a in-tank conversion pump. Uh, this is going to pick its signal source up at the ECM. Uh, then you're going to have a relay in here, an inline blade fuse, and then go back to the tank and hook up at your stock factory harness and then supply power to the in-tank power flow lift pump. All right. So who is this for and what do we do with this and, and who wants to buy this? Today we're going to be putting on a 2001 truck. This is actually my VP44 rig. This is an unmolested truck. I don't have a lift pump on this truck, save for a stock one. Stock fuel filter canister. Everything stock on this truck. No tuning, no nothing. Uh, never been touched. This is going to be the first performance modification that's been done on this truck. Now. This kit can be used with trucks that have already had other types of lift pumps put on them. If you've put another type of lift pump on, lift pump on your truck and you've already taken your fuel bowl out and taken it all the way to your injection pump, this is going to work for you as well. This is going to put a fuel filter back in play for you. Water separating capabilities with the fuel filter housing. Uh, just It takes care of all of that. Uh, if you had to molest your, um, uh, you cut up your in tank module, on your truck as well if you're having quarter tank issues you're just tired of fooling with it this is another uh, another way to fix that so that's so what we're going to be doing today we're going to be putting the vb44 uh power flow lift pump from fleece in on this o1 truck totally forgot to mention one of the best parts of this kit as well lifetime warranty from fleece fill out your warranty card with a copy of your receipt you'll be sending it in to fleece this will get you the lifetime warranty on the power flow lift pump just another great feature of it now let's get started with our installation all right in order to access your fuel tank what i like to do is i like to drop the drive shaft out not necessary you can do it if you want to just have to have, have to fight it but i like to drop the drive shaft out so four eight metric bolts on the drive shaft and she pops right out 
All right, once you get your caps off, just go ahead and pop the drive shaft out. All right, next step on removing your tank, uh, if this cross member, it depending on your truck configuration, this cross member is in your way, you're gonna have to go ahead and take it out before you can take the tank down. So we'll go ahead and drop this cross member down. All right, before dropping your tank, you're also going to have to uh, remove your uh, filler neck hose and as well the vent hose here. And you can just slide these off the pipe. You can leave them actually attached to the tank. Uh, but just slide them off the pipe there. That's the way I, I usually do it. So we'll go ahead and work through this here. This truck's never been into before, so a lot of rust and whatnot. So just take your time and uh, be aware of grabbing this and can break it off at the filler net back underneath of the bed here at your access door for this. So just go ahead and pop off the vent hose and the filler hose. There's both hoses off. All right, so we've got a transmission jack underneath the tank here. If you don't have a transmission jack at home and you're doing this in your driveway, just make sure that you put, uh, you know, floor jack or something underneath the tank, especially if it's got fuel in it. Uh, about a half tank fuel in this one, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be heavy and it's gonna be awkward. So transmission jack underneath it here, we're just gonna go ahead and loosen up the straps. Quick note on your straps, go ahead and hit these with penetrating oil before you loosen this bolt up. You really don't want to break that bolt off in there. That makes for a bad day for sure. So penetrating oil, take your time uh, and just, just go ahead and loosen your straps up. What we'll do here is we'll go ahead and uh, run our bolts down while the, the tank is on the jack and we'll get our straps flipped out of the way. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a strap on here, chain the tank up to where it can't go anywhere on the jack. All right, got the bolts out of our straps now. I'll get ready to go ahead and take our straps down. What I like to do is just go ahead and pull these right off of the mounting stud. Your back strap on the on the the uh, Dodge trucks, you can actually get to the access port right here. Let's see, if, no, Jimmy can see that, so you can kind of see how that strap comes out of there once it lines up and just comes right on out. Same way with the front strap. What I like to do on the front strap is I like to lower the tank down just a little bit, kind of get me, get it to where I can push the tank away from the side and then I can get that front strap out. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and strap this tank to the um, to our jack and I wanna lower it down just a little bit that gives me a little bit easier access to my fuel lines on the top. Got our tank strapped down here, chained down. We're ready to go ahead and start working on the fuel lines on the top. What I've done is I've dropped it down probably four inches just to give myself a little bit more access on the top. With a little bit of access on the top here, we can get to the sending unit just a little bit better. Don't drop it down too far because you'll uh, break the sending unit out. You're replacing the sending unit anyway, but still you just don't want to bull in the china closet it. So <laughs> we've talked about this before plenty of times on how to do it. Now these fuel lines here, they have got quick connects on them. So what you'll do, the little plastic quick connects, there's one on the top, one on the bottom as well. Get yourself a pair of needle nose pliers, pinch them together, and then pull your line straight off. You can kind of see the line configuration there. This is the pressure, this is the return. So you just want to push those in and pop them off. The return clip here, you're going to be reusing that on the new sending unit. So make sure you don't tear that up. Make sure you get that off correctly. Start with this one, start with the supply, pop it off, and then it gives you more access for the return side. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those lines off real quick. And then after that, the tank is ready to come down. All right, last piece of the equation before we get all the way, before we take our tank all the way down, is we gotta go ahead and get our electric connector off of here. So be real careful with this, especially age of these trucks. A lot of this stuff you're gonna have to do, you're just gonna have to be careful with. So red connector pop it out. I think I've got that enough. We'll know here in just a second. Yep, there we go. Save that for later because you're going to be making another connection right there. So we are ready to come all the way down with the tank now and work on getting our sending unit out. The first thing I want to do here is I want to go ahead and get this quick clip off of here because this is going to actually go back into the stock return line and it's going to be used to make our connection at our fleece sending unit. So to do that, you just have to get the ears past the, uh, past the locking collar. 
on this, which is kind of just delicate work, man. So just go through here and work that up and it'll pop right off. You can kind of see how those collars are on there. Um, so it just has to go, just has to come past this ridge. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm just gonna take this, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it back into the return line, which is the smaller of the two. I know you can't see that, but I'm just popping it back in the return line. You heard the clip there. So now when I get my sending unit on from fleece, all I have to do is go ahead and pop it on. So. These locking rings on the tanks, I use just a big strap wrench to pop them loose. Pretty easy stuff here. I like to have a blow, uh, have a blower nozzle handy. And once I make that first, once I've got it loosened up, I'll go ahead and get compressed air, just clean out around this like so. Clean out around this, and then I don't have to worry about dropping in my fuel tank. So, and then you can do that as you're loosening up the collar too. When the collar loosens up, that's when the most dirt is really gets wedged loose there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and spin that off. And then I will actually take the collar off of the tank completely, just like so. And then get my nozzle one more time and go ahead and go around it before I lift this standing unit out. There we go. All right. Now that that's done, time to take the sending unit out. So our sending unit, we just lift straight up on it, like so. Gonna have quite a bit of fuel in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to take it out slow as we can, let it drain as best we can. So once you get it up out of the fuel, there's no perfect way to do this. You're gonna lose some of the fuel. So what I'm gonna do here is you wanna watch the direction of your, um, of your uh, uh, float as well as you're picking it up. So try to make sure that the float, you're not messing it up any. All right, so again, there's fuel in here. So just take your time. I've got a fuel container down here, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift her on out. A little bit of prep work to do here before we start to uh, install our our uh, power flow sending unit here. First thing we're going to be doing is uh, fleece sends you a new uh, O-ring for the tank side of it, uh, which is an, again a nice addition here. We're going to go ahead and put that on the sending unit just to have it ready to go before we before we put it underneath the truck. You can set orient it. Um, you want the flat side of it to go against the top here. And then that way that will create your seal. And then you're also gonna be putting your fuel level float on here. Let me grab that real quick. So your fuel level float comes in, the, comes in your kit. And as you can see here, what you're gonna wanna do with it is the um, this end is going to actually go into the float itself or into the canister itself, the card itself. Sorry, can't talk today. And then this arm will engage this little plastic thing right here. This is real easy to break, so just kind of be even with it as you're putting the pressure against it. Just kind of push it in, just like so. Should click in, and then that way your arm is uh, you, your arm is uh, parallel to a flat surface here. So that's got that done. This is gonna have an AN fitting that is going to attach to it right here, which is gonna be your pressure side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the canister over here, get it out of my way, and then talk to our, talk about our next part. Of all the fittings that you get, of all of the uh, AN fittings that you get here, 
The 45 degree is what you're going to be uh, go ahead and you're going to go ahead and install into your half inch fuel line. I don't cut anything. I leave the whole fuel line uh, together like this, and then go ahead and install my fuel fitting. Just go ahead and lube the fitting up just a little bit. Then push it in. So you want to make sure that you use a 45 degree fitting there. Uh, there are two more 45 degree fittings. Those are going to be used at the filter housing. Then there's a 90 degree fitting. The 90 degree fitting is actually going to be at the VP44. And the last piece to the puzzle before we start putting our tank together is go ahead and have your wiring harness ready. While the tank's down, it's going to be easiest for you to make these connections at the wiring harness while the tank is down. So now we're ready to install our, mo our fleece module. So we've got our float in, we're ready to go. We've got our seal on our sending unit again. So we're gonna go ahead and just install this. Just make sure that your float clears the tank and you don't bend anything and messed up. There's no calibrating that needs to be done here. It goes right in. Now, a word about the, um, about the orientation of this. On your stock module, there was a part on the module that wasn't actually an orient orientation tab, I guess you could call it. So it was right here on the tank. So what I do is I just kind of look at where that sending unit was and then just orient my, uh, my sending unit back the way it needs to go. One of the cool things about this is, is on your old sending unit, the old sending unit actually has the lines kind of pointed backwards and then the electrical connector pointing forward. But now fleece has lined all this up where everything is uh, perpendicular with the, the frame rail. So once we have our sending unit down in here and where we want it, we're going to go ahead and call that good. You can collapse it. Just watch your seal. And then you're good to go. So you just want to check your range there, make sure you're good, and have your cap ready to tighten it down once you get it where you want it. We want to talk just a little bit about the new tank seal that you get with the fleece uh, power flow module here. The seal is very tight, so what you want to do is when you start your pump in, go ahead and start the pump, the leading edge of the seal. Then use something dull. We use this O-ring tool that's got dull edges on it. Go around it and get everything started. Keep constant pressure on it. Then you get to your second lip. It's kind of an umbrella seal. Go around, get your second lip in, and then go ahead and push, and it'll seat itself in there. You'll be in good shape. Another tip on these, lock, on these tank rings, we have guys a lot of times that have problems with these. Find your lead edge, find your lead thread on these, find your lead thread inside the cap, match the two of them up, and that's gonna save you a lot of headache. Don't get it started and keep fooling with it, and fooling with it, and fooling with it, and just cross it until it's think it's gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay, it's gonna leak, I promise you. Been there too many times and talked to too many guys that have done it. So we're in good shape here, everything's good. Strap wrench, everything tight to make sure that we don't have any problems, so we're good. All right, so with that, um, sorry, I need to strap wrench it the other way. So now with that, we're tightened down, we're ready to go. Um, again, like we talked about, you want to make sure that you have your end in the uh, return line. The other line's not going to be affected here, and then we're going to hook into our we're going to hook our wiring harness and get it done here before we start it before we start the tank up all right we want to go ahead and do harness so we're the this is the fleece harness uh, we're going to go ahead and call this uh, go ahead and call this the male end I guess you want to just make sure you go back to our harness side truck side and then push it in lock it down and then to the tank lock it down all of those are just like stock connectors so fleece did a good job on that so now this wiring harness i'm just going to lay it out of my way it'll route about the same way as what our stock harness goes and then we'll get it on the outside of the frame rail there uh, you want to do the uh, you want to do this relay as quick as you can there Ooh, that lost my light 
do your relay as quick as you can. Go ahead and get it across the frame rail. Get it dropped down while you've got an opportunity there because there's a gap in the frame rail there between it and the bed that'll allow you to do that. So we're gonna go ahead and fish that through and then we'll come back and get our fuel line. All right, now it's time to attach our fuel line. So again, we used our 45 degree fitting here that fleece supplies us with. You just wanna unwind the hose. I'm gonna orient this to where the fuel line is going of course towards the front. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our cap. Then we'll go ahead and install our fuel line here. We wanna tighten this down as well. Make sure you leave yourself access to get your, uh, your return line on. So either way it can go really high or low. I would say at this it's probably gonna have to go uh, probably gonna have to go high. Yeah. Yep, so just had to look at it there for a minute. Actually, we can, might be able to go a little bit lower here. So just looking at the way that's gonna lay out, I'm gonna go just a little bit lower and hope that I can shoot the gap there. So go ahead and tighten our, go ahead and tighten our line down. All right, we're ready to put the tank back in. And I'm gonna say this for the last time, I've said it a bunch of times, make sure that you've got the quick clip into the fuel return line and ready to go here. So we've got everything oriented up there. We're gonna just go ahead and we've got our wiring harness run down the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and go with fuel lines and start getting them run. And that's all we're doing. We're just putting the tank back up. Um, this doesn't need to be filmed. You took the tank down, you're gonna understand how to put the tank back up. You're not gonna run into anything there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to you once the tank is up and we're running everything up the, the frame rail towards the engine compartment. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and prep our fuel filter head to go inside of the truck. Now I just wanna talk about this just a little bit here's the just the general cliff notes of what we're doing here we're taking the stock fuel filter housing out and we're putting the fleece fuel filter housing in simple enough the reason why i wanted to say that is because we're just not going to get that good under hood shots with the camera we do everything we can for lighting it sometimes it just doesn't work out the best way so i want to do as much of the setup here out on the table so you guys see it so this fuel filter housing um I'm assuming that this is probably going to be used with some of the CP3 applications. So the first thing you'll see is there's two out ports on here. On the VP44 trucks, we're not going to be using the second out port, so we're going to go ahead and plug that. Now these are all O-ring fittings, or these are O-ring fittings, so don't new, no need to use thread tape here. So that out port there, we're going to just go ahead and install that. We've got two sensor ports right here. This is for to pick up electronic sensors on here. They're 1 8 by 27 MPT stuff uh, fittings. We're not gonna be using those today. So we're gonna go ahead and plug them as well. Just drop those two plugs in. Okay, now on the in and the out. So fuel in, fuel out. We're gonna be, there's three more of these fittings left. We're gonna use two of those. These are O-ring fittings again, so no need for thread tape here. So just use the, go ahead and put our fittings on the in the out portion. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and prep the fitting that's gonna go at our VP44. Fleece sends a uh, ceiling washer with this you can go ahead and throw this on the fitting just like so and have it ready for you so the 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 smaller inlet fitting that goes on our VP44 pump now these are our hose fittings they're going to go on there but we'll use we'll get to those when we cut our hose the 45s go on the filter head the 90 degree fitting it's the one that goes at the VP44 pump you got an extra fitting here just for your enjoyment um, I don't know why a man wouldn't just go ahead and throw the fuel bowl or the fuel filter on here. The fuel filter comes with an O-ring. Make sure you put the O-ring on the stem there and install your fuel filter. So you'll be ready once you get it in the 
engine bay. So there's our fuel filter housing set up. I'll tighten this stuff up and then we'll get started in the engine bay. Now it's time to take your stock fuel bowl out of your truck. Now, first thing, you're gonna need 11 16 wrench. You're gonna need a 10 metric uh, socket to remove it. The stock fuel bowl on these trucks is really easy to remove. So to begin doing that, you're going to unhook the water and fuel light and the fuel heater. And you won't have to worry about this tripping a light inside the truck because it will not come on. So just unhook both of those. You're gonna have a little bit of residual fuel inside of the bowl. If you don't want to fool with that, go ahead and drain the bowl out. Put a, uh, put a, uh, a catch uh, can underneath of the truck. Drain the fuel bowl with, with the, uh, the water and fuel drain right here. And you're gonna want to go ahead and disconnect the fuel inline on the pump and you'll see it coming from the fuel bowl. So your fuel inline on some of the trucks on the like 2000 and up trucks gonna have a straighter valve at the pump. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go ahead and loosen that up. You're gonna lose some fuel out of this. We Again, we suggest having a can underneath the truck to catch some of the fuel, because this is gonna drain the VP44. So we'll go ahead and get that out. Next, we're gonna get the fuel in line off of the back of the fuel filter housing. So while I'm running this out, you can hear the fuel draining there. We'll go ahead and be removing the inlet line here on the back of the fuel filter housing. So it's on the very back. I know Adam's working to get a shot there for us, but it's gonna be hard for me and him both to be in the same shot here. I'm good if you are. I'm good. So now that we've got that loose, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run this fitting out as well. So we'll come back to you. you. Don't need to watch me run this fitting out. It's in an awkward position anyway, so it'll take me a while. So I'll go ahead and run this out and then we'll come back and show you removing the bowl. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove the two 10 metric bolts that hold the stock fuel bolt, fuel bowl to the intake runner here. So just go ahead and remove those and then we're gonna just lift our Golly. We're just going to go ahead and lift our bowl out. Keep this hardware. You will be reusing this hardware for the fleece bowl. Sometimes, for you folks out there in TV land, it's hard to work on the truck and watch your camera lighting too. But it's all in good fun. All in good fun. So, go ahead and remove this bolt here. Again, if you want to drain your fuel bowl because you're gonna have a little bit of residual fuel that are gonna come out of here. Two electrical connectors off of it and the fuel line. If it gives you problems, you don't like it, it's uh, just a pain you can always take that feed line to the VP44 off but it will come off come out with a feed line on it so there you go ready to come out of the truck before you put the new fuel bowl in I would suggest go ahead and unhooking the power supply to your stock lift pump or to catch the drop the electrical drop that comes out of the ECM that would have been supplying the uh, power source going back to your in tank lift pump if you had that Anyway, it goes, you're gonna be catching the power right here. So it's easier to do it while you got the fuel bowl off. You got a mile to work with here. Just go ahead and unhook it from the stock pump. Then take your fleece wiring harness. It has got the connector on it as well, ready to go. Go ahead and hook the fleece connector in and that's gonna supply power that goes gonna to go to your fleece pump. That's gonna power the fleece pump. All right. Now, since that's done, that gives us a lot of room to make that connection. Time to go ahead and just drop the 
fleece fuel bowl in here. Like I said, I went ahead and put the fuel filter on it. You don't have to do that, but I just felt like it was gonna be an easier way to go for me. So let's drop our fuel filter housing in. And there we go. So we're gonna tighten these two 10 metric bolts down and then we'll start routing our fuel lines. Now we're gonna go ahead and start running our fuel lines. So first thing I like to do here is I'm gonna go ahead and put my A and N fitting on it and I'm gonna leave this loose uh, for your oil level gauge. It's got a bracket right there that's kind of gonna be just, you're gonna, it's gonna be something you're gonna have to work around. So I'm gonna make that finger tight and I feel like that's gonna allow me to do this push to lock connection on this hose pretty easily. So I'll kind of eyeball that. Get where I want to cut my hose. Sorry. Adam. If you guys ever wanted to take up a GoFundMe page, go send me some money for a new set of hose clips. I know everybody's taking up money right now for my topside creeper cushion. Uh, what we really need is that. So with that on the fuel filter base, that gives us more leverage to where we can push that hose on. And close the gap right there. So there is our is our in line. Now we're gonna do our outline. But to keep ourselves from having to make two more cuts, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do my VP44, and then that way I only have one cut to do. So I'm gonna do the VP44 side now. Next connection I want to do, I want to go ahead and do my VP44 connection. The reason why I'm gonna do this is because I'm gonna go ahead and put my end in here, and then I only have to make one more cut at the fuel filter housing. Uh, so that's just going to be going to be how we're going to pull that there. So it'll be easier for me to make that cut at the fuel filter housing than having to do it at the VP44. So I'm going to go ahead and do the VP44 with my tag in hose. Go ahead and put our 90 degree fitting in here again. We use the 90 degree on this end. So you take your fuel filter fitting that is that has the smaller end on it and go ahead and screw it inside the VP44. Little note about this right here as well. You want to make sure that the ceiling washer that came off of your old fitting got removed from this. A lot of guys will double up on that washer. You wind up having a leak there. No good. No good. So we're going to go ahead and put that fitting in the VP on the VP44 side now. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and route our line down to our VP44. Now, once it is on the VP44, I actually, uh, I like to bleed from the return line bolt. So I'll go ahead and tighten that when I'm ready. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my last fitting on the fuel filter housing. And again, I like to put these on 
and then cut my holes and take my holes to them because it just gives you I feel like it gives you a better a better seal or better way to put the line up on the fuel filter housing so we'll go ahead and tighten that down kind of get a look at it and gauge it where I need to cut it Plenty of holes for you long bed, extended cab guys. You're gonna have plenty there. So, all good, nothing to worry about. So, what I'm gonna do there is just I need to take a little bit more off there. Actually, I do. I'm gonna cut just a fuzz more off of here. Cause that line, the way it lays there, if you leave it a little bit too long, it just got one length on it there that can really mess you up. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and this fuel line on. All right. So now we got our fuel line on. I'll shove that up on there just a little bit more. I'm in a bad position right here. I'll let Adam cut out. So I'll put this fuel line on a little bit more, then I'll go through and tighten up all my fuel fittings. All right, now it's time to work on our electrical side. So what I like to do here is I like to try to orient everything behind the brake hydro boost because what that does is that keeps it out of the steering shaft as well here too. So um, this drop here, I put this on at the, um, I had an extension drop at the ECM. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that drop out. That's not something you guys need to worry about. But I like to orient it on that side of the brake booster. It keeps it out of the steering shaft so I don't have to worry about it getting caught up in the steering shaft. And what I'll do here is once I get done, I'll take my relay and I'll zip tie it up there. And the cool thing about this relay is this inline fuse is gonna be real close to it. So I'll try to get it high. That way that keeps my inline fuse where I can get to it pretty quick to check my fuse. If I ever pop fuse, nice 20 amp fuse in here. So uh, it's gonna pack a lot. So now all we have to do is I like to orient it over on this side. So I already know where I'm going, and then just kind of slap Adam in the face with a few wires here, no big deal. And then I just want to pull my drop down. So this is the, obviously the negative, orange is you're going to be your positive. This is your constant power for your battery. So I'll kind of orient that over there. So you guys see what we're doing, really nothing new here. So time to do electrical. All right, we're ready to bleed our system out now. We've got our electrical portion done, um, got our zip ties and everything up, got everything cleaned up, so we're ready to go here. So to bleed these, you can do this a couple of different ways. I, I'm just bleeding out the, um, the fleece filter housing. Uh, so what I like to do is, I just like to loosen up the, uh, the return bolt that's on the front of the VP44. It's a three quarter inch here. Just loosen it. Once you have fuel flow, you'll know it because you'll get fuel uh, instead of spraying everywhere and making a mess it's just gonna run down this line if you've got a catch bowl underneath here the same one we we had uh, when we started this and we took our stock bowl out so i've got something in here to catch it so hunter's gonna bump it for us we've already bumped it we've already bled it we've got fuel up here but we're gonna show you what you're looking for here go ahead and bump it hunter so you can kind of see the fuel there so we got her bled now hopefully and this isn't always going to be the case hopefully we're going to get it running truck here and we're not going to have to bleed them at the injectors but if we have to bleed on the injectors not that big of a deal usually if it starts and shuts off immediately that just means you've got to go straight to the injector so all right. So 
move out of the way here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. All right, so we are gonna have to bleed them. I'm probably gonna have to get a different wrench than this. Open up the number one and three injectors. It usually works just fine. Don't ask me why I've got a stubby three quarter. I just had it in my hand when I started this. So, all right, crank it, Hunter. Crank it. Keep cranking. A quick, unplanned tutorial on how to bleed out a VP44 truck. Sorry about that. Turn like a kid. All right, that's it. We uh, don't have any leaks in our housing here. Everything looks good. We're in good shape there. All right, shut her off, Hunter. So we got our power flow lift pump installed. Our closing shot for this installation video, we actually didn't have any sound, so we came back to it about a week later. Uh, so which is actually gonna be a little bit, a little bit better here because I wanted to talk about a uh, couple of things on the pump. First off, as, as far as the installation goes, easy installation. You guys that have had the tanks out of your trucks before, I think that it's gonna be an, a really easy install for you. I feel like it cleans up your engine bay as well good quality product, gonna flow tons of fuel for you. You're getting the warranty. So really, really excited about this product. I really like what it does. So many of these trucks out here with the fuel gauge isn't working, it fixes that issue on, on most of those trucks. But there's a lot of advantages to this unit, this fleece power flow lift pump. It's been running great for me. Haven't had any problems, it's super quiet. Uh, it just, it's just a good, good kit. Really excited about it being out here on the market for you VP44 guys. I think it's gonna be a, a, a big winner. So I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. If you have any questions about this installation or about any fleece products, please give us a call. Like and subscribe to our channel. If you've got anything to say, drop it in the comments below and we'll answer any of your questions or banter back and forth with you. So thanks for watching.